Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Respected brothers and sisters, inshallah we will begin shortly. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Sayyidan al Aziz. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. May Allah um, accept your fasting, prayers, and good deeds. How are you, Sayyidina? Alhamdulillah, Sayyidina. How are you? May Allah accept your amal as well. Alhamdulillah. Thank you so much. It's done. The Eid is in the corner. Yes, it's in the corner, mashallah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So, tomorrow, apparently, tomorrow is the last day of the month of Ramadan, which means that tomorrow night, is the night of Eid, which is a very special night according to the traditions that we have by the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt, peace and blessings be upon them. Be upon them. I wanted to begin by quoting a narration, um, which is actually in Jama'a, Hadith al-Shia by Sayyid al burujardi in which the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, is reported to have said, إِذَا كَانَتْ لَيْلَةُ عِيدِ الْفِطْرِ فَإِذَا كَانَتْ لَيْلَةُ عِيدِ الْفِطْرِ وَهِيَ الَّتِي تُسَمَّى لَيْلَةِ الْجَوَائِزِ أَعْطَى اللَّهُ الْعَامِلِينَ أَجْرَهُمْ بِغَيْرِ حِسَابِ He says when it is the night of Eid al-Fitr, which is named as the night of prizes, Allah will give the good doers their reward without account. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward all mu'mineen, mu'minat, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all because there's another Nawaya just in line with, uh, with what you uh, said, Mawlana. Uh, so we have just one and two uh, blessed nights left. And inshallah, everyone will take the opportunity and uh, uh, try to be closest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this opportunity as much as we can. Definitely need to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this, uh, you know, for his blessings and mercy that uh, inshallah we do not leave this month without forgiveness, inshallah. Alhamdulillah, ilahi amin. Sayyidina, do you know these days, uh, definitely you as well, you, we receive a lot of questions about two things, about zakat al fitra and uh, moon sighting. And sure. uh, subhanAllah, sure. since so many years I'm working and I have this uh, privilege to serve, but every year, always, always we receive new questions, new situations. And uh, still myself as a student, who still is learning more and more about Zakat al-Fatah. Can you, can you believe that? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. SubhanAllah, Sayyidina, the, the Masail are always, you know, renewing themselves. There is always an aspect that we may have not um, either considered or we may have not paid attention to, but there's always something in terms of application. You know, although we know the ruling, Alhamdulillah, but the application might change from time to time, especially now, for example, since you mentioned Zakat al-Fitrah, one main question is that, you know, the depositing in the bank, that wasn't, of course, something that was um, years ago where people pay their zakat online. And now people are saying, how do I do that online? Yeah. And recently we have told our respected brothers and sisters that you need to give it as amana, as a trust to the entity and delegate them to take it out on your behalf on the day of Eid al-Fitr. And that way you have done it properly. That's really important. Thank you for explaining and for bringing this up. Um, always I explain this, uh, including in my organization, when we ask people, we tell them we offer the service for you to pay Zakat al-Fitr. In fact, they don't pay the Zakat al-Fitr. They just wire money to us and they give us wakale. We will do it on their behalf. So on the night of Eid and the uh, same day of Eid, I personally, on behalf of Hakim al-Shara, I take the money and, and hand it from hand to hand on behalf of Mu'mineen, and inshallah, we spend it to the needy people. This is the only way we can do. Otherwise, yes, it will not be valid if just someone pays the Catholic and say, okay, I fulfilled my obligation. That's not enough. 
ahsantum. Just merely submitting a payment online does not mean that it's a katul fitra. That's what, you know, brothers and sisters have to understand is that, you know, just submitting a payment online is submitting a payment. So the solution is that you're, as you said, Sayyidina, basically you're entrusting it to this entity and you're delegating them to take it out on your behalf on the day of fitra. It's just a matter of intention. The act is the same. You're submitting a payment, but you're intending. And likewise, some people say that, you know, I have relatives back home in Pakistan or in Iraq or in India or in Africa or in Yemen who are in need. How do I help them with zakat al-fitra? I say the same thing. If you have money, send it before time. Just send it as a money transfer. But once it reaches there, then you can request them to take it out on your behalf as zakat al-fitra. And that way it's done in a valid way as well. Uh, the same discussion and same point. Um, imagine that one person asked me, um, can I uh, pay my zakat al uh, and donate it to the Islamic Center? I said, how come? Um, then he shared with me, announcement came from some local uh, Islamic Center. It seems new and in different states. So people just ask, uh, please pay your zakat al fitr to us. The Islamic Center needs your support. So I double checked. I know the answer, but I double checked just in case there's some new situation. There's no fatwa, and I realized the, exactly a Q and A that listed on the website of uh, main office in Najaf, Sistani.org. He said no. The zakat al fitr should be. Uh, based on uh, احتياط وجوبي, uh, uh, obligation uh, pro- proportion mm-hmm. to be paid to the needy person. You to can't, person. Yeah, you, you can't pay it to uh, everyone or any Islamic project, uh, even as, as needed. Or at least, if say if the the religious authority they accept it, then yeah, you know, with the, the permission. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Exactly. So at this point, um, one thing, Sayyidina, that I realize that we want to share with our communities is that why do we want everything to come out of zakat al fitra? I can contribute to my Islamic center who's in need from my own money, or I can give them maybe from Sahmul Imam if they have a jaza. As I know, for example, through Imam, there are multiple centers who are able to get a jaza through Imam to receive a, a certain amount of Sahmul Imam. And I think that is a solution for them because the Qatar Fatra is, is a small amount that may not suffice in helping the Islamic Center. Uh, we have multiple ways of helping. We can, you know, contribute and donate, right? Um, we can take it out of Sahmul Imam, as we've mentioned. So it shouldn't be, you know, limited to um, the Zakat al Fatra, which is mainly aimed towards those who are in need. Yeah. And what about you? Did you receive some weird questions or? <laughs> well, many, many, subhanAllah, different types of questions um, in terms of the um, crescent. You know, that's, that's something that, generally speaking, you know, people are always concerned about, is that, you know, how do we know that this is the same uh, ufuq, you know, and if the hilal is, re- you know, cited in another area, how can we ascertain that we are both in the same horizon? And sometimes these things can get very tricky. That's why we rely on certain websites to show us whether this area is in the curve line or not. And a lot of times people, uh, you know, tell us that we want you to tell us exactly which area and which town is part of. That's that difficult. That's difficult. And we are not going to take that risk. Uh, yeah. So. It isn't. It's not easy. It's very challenging. Yeah. yeah. As long as the illumination and uh, the, the high, uh, the, the altitude high. and illumination of the moon mm-hmm is same or similar mm-hmm. between two areas that could be considered a uh, shared horizon and uh, today on online all these uh, data are available just with a few calculation and a uh, little bit search uh, we can find out by the way as long as in some certain area the crescent um, be visible and be sighted Everybody can see the uh, curves exactly as you mentioned, Sayyidna, on the uh, diagrams, images on online, where where it shows there's curve. And if you are sure the location that crescent has been cited there, it's on the same curve. That means all this curve 
under same horizon. Under the same horizon, accent to which make which makes it easier, you know, especially that when the announcement comes out, usually every month from Imam, we provide people with that curve line, right, which which helps people kind of figure out where they fall. Yes, the map may not have the names of all the towns because it's not practical to put all of them. But I think when we compare it to a map that has the um, the names of the cities, it becomes easy to know which part, uh, which town falls under the curve. But Alhamdulillah, I think, Sayyidina, this year we are lucky that tomorrow, inshallah, at night, um, the majority of the you know United States or North America uh, can see, inshallah, the, the, the moon and therefore... There's a very, very high chance that, inshallah, will be confirmed. Tomorrow. Yeah, the data says it's easily will be cited and depends on the uh, sky. Uh, anyway, but uh, there is another question always I receive it. Um, some people say we noticed that the Crescent Committee announced the announcement while the sunset in Western, uh, uh, on Pacific, for example, uh, in Western states still didn't take place. How come you announce it? It's yes, this one Sayyidina caused a lot of challenges. And, and I want to say to those brothers and sisters before Sayyidina, just to interrupt you real quick, that um, they really have to understand before making a judgment. Because I've received also, um, you know, many times that people are saying, uh, you guys are not doing the right thing because sun has not set yet in California, yet you guys have issued the crescent. So th that's important for uh, explanation and elaboration from you, Sayyidina, please. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, actually, it is a logical dedication and calculation. doesn't need a lot of uh, discussion. From the east side to the west, as much as time uh, moving forward, Definitely, definitely the, the moon will be raised and raised more and more and will be easy to be seen and sighted in Western areas. So as long as time passed, definitely, logically, it will show uh, that the crescent will be visible also in Western areas. And there's no way, again, this is just calculation, there's no way a crescent be sighted in New York, for example, then after three hours will not be visible in Seattle, uh, Portland, uh, San Francisco, and uh, Southern California. California. Definitely it will be cited. And no one can bring only one case or one situation this happened. So this is basically something that uh, we can ascertain that once it is cited, let's say in New York uh, or in these areas, even though the sun has not set yet in South California, that still gives us certainty that definitely it can be or cannot be cited. Yes. Sure. Yes. Sure. Sent them. Yes, was. because the argument happened not because it was cited, but because it was not cited, right? Because we said that it was not confirmed um, due to the fact that we, we had no, um, you know, visibility. No one cited it with the, you know, naked eye clearly. Um, so therefore, we said it was incited. The argument was that you could have waited until the sunset of California. Yeah, actually, in the beginning of this uh, holy month, uh, there's something uh, happened. Um, when the announcement of the Christian Committee of the Council of Shia Muslim Scholars of America went out, later, uh, some people reported that they they seen the, the Christian. Uh, that's fine. Uh, and the complaint came why uh, the Christian committee announced it soon. Uh, they should wait a little bit more. Uh, that's fine. C could be uh, could solve the problem. But still, the issue is same issue. We had another issue. We have to uh, say it clearly. This is a religious matter. It is not your opinion, my opinion. Unfortunately, the witnesses they contradict each other. So some people, they say, we saw the moon. Some of them, they say, we couldn't see it. Some of them, they said, we saw it by the binocular. So according to Say Sistani's opinion, as long as there are some contradictions and- Or in, conflicting statements, yes. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. He doesn't accept that. Not only him, uh, also uh, so many uh, religious authorities, Maraja, they have some uh, view on this. That's why the Kirsten Committee, based on the coordination I had with them, and I'm very close to them and working with them 
yani exactly time by time, uh, minute by minute. I, they didn't conf convince, but also they issued another statement that anyone, we, we can't force people, we do just services. Anyone has contentment, anyone attained any type of contentment that the crescent was there, okay, it's good for them, go with it and that's it. It's proof we don't on them. Yeah, we don't, need to, we don't need to make a problem and talk to people and bring this community, bring some uh, division and split the community to this and that. That doesn't work. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will take out the blessing from us, will not Ahsantum. bless us anymore. Ahsantum, Sayyidina. While we're speaking, you're speaking, Sayyidina. There's, uh, I think, uh, one of the brothers and sisters has asked, what is the niya if we can give it to Imam? Um, I'll repeat that. So basically, when you submit the payment, your niya when you're submitting is that you're entrusting the organization, you're giving them amana, a trust, so that they can take it out on your behalf as zakatul fitra on the day of Eid. So all you're doing is entrusting them for that purpose. I entrust Imam to take out zakat from this amount on the day of Eid. It's like giving somebody an amana, keep it with you, and on the day of Eid, take it out and give it to the poor. That's how we should do it, inshallah. I hope Sorry. that answers your uh, question, uh, the brother or sister that raised the question. If you need further explanation, please don't hesitate to write it in the comments. So do you see the questions here on the monitor? Yes, I see them screen? in front of me, Sayyidina. They oh. come on the uh, comments, basically. I guess you're not seeing them on the, uh, uh, in front of you on the screen? No, no, I, I think because you, you are- the oh, Because I'm the host and, okay, yeah. so maybe that's why, okay. Yeah, no, no problem. problem. I'll read them, inshallah, as they come, inshallah, Sayyidina. Sure, sure. Any more questions, any more I think I think also one thing to point out, Sayyidina, is that there are uh, important mustahabbat that we should try to uh, observe the night of Eid and the day of Eid. So like ghusl, for example, a ritual bath, which is mustahab the night of Eid and on the day of Eid. And often I get this question, or sometimes at least, that um, does this suffice in place of wudu? Well, the ghusl on the day of Eid, according to his eminence, Sayyid Sistani, suffices. But there are other fuqaha, they say it doesn't. So to be on the safe side and to observe precaution, it doesn't Do hurt to add wudu. <laughs> ghusl and wudu to be on the safe side. Do Sentence. both, yeah. Do both. Just Ahsantum. to be on the safe side. Ahsan. Exactly. And Any Sayyidina other recommendations, Sayyidina, you think we can share first, um, with our first, brothers and sisters? Uh, as, you, as you may know, uh, reciting Dua Wada' Shah Ramadan from Imam Ali ibn al-Hussein Sajjad, which is a really beautiful Dua, and it shows you and, and put you in very spiritual and emotional situation. You feel you are saying bye to the lovely month and you feel sad uh, it is moments. it is that we, we got used to this beautiful blessed month and when, when it's about to leave although some of us are saying yes no no more fasting and now we can eat lunch but at the same time we're going to miss out on all the blessings and the spirituality that we have lived and gained in this month uh, another question from one of the uh, brothers or sisters I, I can't tell if it's a brother or sister sorry they're saying if salatul eid is wajib or mustahab I'll let you elaborate on that, Sayyidina. Ahsan. Salat al-Eid is wajib during the time of Imam al-Masum, alayhi salam. But in, in the time of occultation, Zaman al-Ghayba, it is mustahab, mu'akkad. So it is, it is highly recommended to participate, but be careful, because still we are in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, health officials, uh, professionals, they, they advise us to keep the distance, social distance, uh, make sure uh, to take vaccine and those who are really vaccinated and they, they can join. But still, taking ihtiyat uh, is, is important. Um, take extra caution just to protect yourself and others from any uh, symptoms. Uh, it's good, it's important to join Mu'mineen uh, exchange the happiness, exchange uh, uh, good words, uh, brotherly uh, words to each other. It's highly important for a community to come together in the Islamic centers, uh, uh, performing Salatul Eid together, but please be careful of uh, this issue. The, the... Ahsantum, Sayyidina, Ahsantum. So, so basically, it, uh, during the time of the Ma'asum, inshallah, when we are blessed with the reappearance of our Imam, of course, it will be wajib at that point. But during his ghayba, it's highly, highly recommended. And as Sayyid mentioned, we all want to make sure that we need to be cautious when we are 
praying during this pandemic so that we are keeping some kind of distance or wearing the mask and making sure that we're protecting ourselves and others. Um, one question, although that came up, is one the second. name of the I, dua. Uh, yes. One second, I would like to add uh, something, side information yes. for this. Uh, one day, one person asked me the, this question. Uh, the mustahab recommended the prayers. Uh, fuqaha, they don't allow us to do it jama'a. In congregation, yes. Uh, prayers. Mm -hmm. So one person asked me, how come Salat al-Eid, as a mustahab, we can do it as jama'a? Uh, mm -hmm. What is the difference? Actually, the difference, just as uh, Sayyid mentioned uh, here, because it is officially... Initially, initially it was wajib. It yes. is wajib. So during the occultation time, still, we can do it as a jama'a. Ahsantum. So when a prayer, in essence, is wajib, it can be performed in jama'ah even if later it became mustahab, as long as the essence of the salah is wajib, right? We know that Salatul Eid was wajib during the time of the Prophet and the Imams. But because we are in occultation, it's not wajib. It's still, we can do it. It's highly recommended, but in jama'ah form, and there is no problem. And by the way, someone can do it on their own as well. So you have the option. Of course, jama'ah is highly rewarded, but you can, if somebody chooses to do it at home for any reason, they can't go out. They want to take precaution, whatever the reason may be, they can always do it on their own at home. And it is very simple. Uh, one uh, brother or sister asked about the dua that you mentioned, Sayyidina. They said, what is it called in the Sahih al Dua wa da'asha Ramadan. The farewell, ahsantum, the farewell for the month of Ramadan. So if you're looking at the English version of al-Sahif al look for the word farewell, farewell of the month of Ramadan, yeah. inshallah. Uh, regarding Zakat al-Fitr, I want to bring some uh, something here also. Um, many people, they have misunderstanding uh, with collecting Zakat al-Fitr or paying Zakat al-Fitr. Uh, I would like to bring the attention of uh, Mu'mineen, brothers, uh, sisters, that uh, Fuqaha, they have condition. Zakat al-Fitr cannot be paid except to two people. The main one, is the needy person, needy person. You give him or her directly or by a, a person that you, you give him a, a representative will represent you to give it to needy or to the Hakim al-Shara. Hakim al-Shara, the jurist. The religious his, authority, the marja yeah. that you resort or emulate to follow. Yes, and, and or his representative. So even the representative sometimes receives the uh, uh, money, Zakat uh, al as amana, but sometimes he receives it because he is the representative of Marja. So be careful for these, uh, these are very important and we have to pay attention. You can't just give your Zakat al to anyone and say, okay, I fulfilled my obligation and that's, uh, that's all. Ahsantum, it's important to know either they are representing you and you trust that they will take it out on your behalf and give it to the poor, or this is a religious authority who is authorized by the marja to receive haqooq and receive zakat al-fitra and handle it on behalf of the marja. So basically that is very important, inshallah, for all brothers and all mu'mineen and mu'minat to consider when they are paying their zakat al-fitra. Yeah. Another yeah. question, Sayyidina, we've received also in the past is that we can um, pay it in the beginning of the month of Ramadan and that we don't have to wait. Uh, you want to elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, so. Ahsan. Actually, it will be wajib on the night of Eid, but you have, Fuqaha, they say, you have time since the night, uh, first night of Ramadan till the last night, you have time to take it out and give it to needy. Maybe some people, they want to get prepared for Eid or maybe they have earlier need and they need money early, uh, to get, receive it earlier. Always, you can do that. There's no problem with it. Ahsantum. And another uh, sister, I believe, said that, can I collect it from my relatives and give it to Imam? As long as your relatives know that they are delegating you to give it to Imam who is delegated to take it out on their behalf. As long as they know the concept. They're giving you amana to transfer to Imam as amana, and then Imam will take it and give it out on your behalf on the day of Eid as a Qatar Qatar. So there's no problem. Uh, with collecting from relatives and family, as long as you tell them how this is supposed to be done, the intention, the need. In, in other words, they use us as a tool, as a mean. So, Ahsent. yeah. Yes, we are just a means, Ahsentum. Imam is a means of transferring. 
It's an organization that you trust. And any organization that you trust or someone who you deem trustworthy that can take this and handle it properly and send it to the poor on your behalf on the day of Eid, that is also sufficient, inshallah. Inshallah. So let me complete about the Mustahabat uh, recommended uh, acts uh, in the day of Eid as well, uh, including Ghusl, you mentioned Sayyidina, uh, uh, performing the prayer, uh, and also uh, Ziyarat al Imam al Hussein, alayhi salam. If possible, visit a cemetery, um, recite Surah Al Fatiha for all those late uh, Mu'mineen, Mu'minat, and especially those who. Uh, we we uh, lost them during uh, last year. The pandemic, yes. Yeah, th that is also uh, mustahab. And visiting mu'minin and mu'minat, visiting uh, each other, that's also mustahab. But be careful during the Eid. Sometimes we need to pay attention, extra attention, to not entail in some not religious environment or not religious acts as well. Ahsantum, you know, any mixed gatherings that lead to haram, um, any type of um, gatherings that are somehow will lead to sin or include sin, such as haram music, and even gatherings that are not observing, uh, you know, enough social distancing just to protect everyone. We want to be mindful of everyone's health and safety as well, inshallah ta'ala. Inshallah. Ahsant. Ahsantum, Sayyidina Al-Aziz. Um, last words that you think, Sayyidina, we can share with the rest of our brothers and sisters before we say farewell to them? Um, there's another question also I want to bring, uh, mm -hmm. elaborate about it. Um, a college student, a college mm -hmm. student should pay the Qatar Fatah or not? Um, he is or she is not in, uh, in house. Uh, they are in dorm, for example, in a different city. Uh, they ask about uh, Zakat al fitrah So the criteria is not being at house or somewhere, some elsewhere. The criteria is who is Mu'ayl, who is Mu'al. We say Mu'ayl and Mu'al. How do you, the how bread do you say winner, the, the breadwinner is the Mu'ayl, the breadwinner, the one who's in charge of supporting financially. And the Mu'al is the dependent who yes. lives on this breadwinner, who depends on the breadwinner. So as long as still you are uh, dependent, still the the uh, bread for the the uh, still he is it is his obligation to pay zakat on yourself. On so your if behalf. I live on someone, if I'm a dependent of someone, even if I'm traveling, as long as that someone is in charge of my eating and drinking and in residence and whatever it is, then I am their dependent and they take it out. And along those lines, one person just asked and they said that. What if my dependent did not fast? I think it does not matter, right? Yeah. Even if they did not fast, even if your dependent was not a believer, according to the ahkam, even if they were not a believer, let's say your dependent is uh, a worker who happened to stay the night at your house and they slept over in your house, they ate, drank, then they are one of your dependents on the night of Eid, which means that you have to pay zakat on their behalf. So fasting and not fasting is not a factor in whether... Zakat al fitra is wajib or not? Because some people are under the assumption, if I didn't fast, then why should I pay zakat al fitra? It is not related to fasting uh, in this in this regard. Yeah. By the way, non-believer talking. Uh, a person mm. contacted me and asked, "What about my wife? My wife is a Christian, and I'm Muslim. Mm. Should I pay zakat on her behalf? Uh, definitely yes. Yes, yeah. because she's a dependent. The criterion, yeah. my dears, is dependency. Ailula, and dependency does not mean it doesn't have to be um, long-term. It can be short-term. So, for example, if someone, I'm not responsible to pay for them, but just two nights ago or last night, they came as a guest and they will remain for at least a day, let's say, for example, or the whole night, then they are a short-term dependent, which means I still have to pay zakat al-fitra on their behalf. Ahsan. Jazakallah khairan. Jazakumullah, Sayyidina Al-Aziz. Thank you so much for enlightening us and, and being together today in this uh, session. We ask Thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless all of the mu'mineen and mu'minat and make this a beautiful and a happy and joyous Eid. Inshallah, it's the last Eid that the world experiences this pandemic. Yeah, Inshallah, Allah. before yeah. next Eid, we are done with coronavirus. Inshallah, all the good will come and all the khair and tawfiq. 
and maybe last last Eid before appearance of Imam Al Mahdi alayhi salam. Salam Allahi alayhi. That's of course our ultimate wish and our ultimate, yeah. ultimate prayer is that the reappearance of our Imam, inshallah. Thank you, Sayyidina. Jazakallah khair. May Allah bless you. Uh, dear brothers and sisters, uh, please, if you have any question, contact us. Visit our website, submit your question, call us, or use WhatsApp, whatever. We have social medias, any, any means you can uh, use. And we have, alhamdulillah, good scholarly team. Uh, here we have new generations, Sayyid Muntadar, one of them, mashallah, exactly. is doing a great job 24 7. Always, uh, this organization will be at your service. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakumullah Sayyidina. Wa alaikum as salam wa early Eid Mubarak to you and to all of our brothers and sisters. Eid Mubarak. 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 Eid Mubarak.